imagine, imagine you wander downstairs to breakfast, perhaps one day, probably in January, and you say to your court painter, who wouldn't be at breakfast, but you summon your court painter, um, and you say, good morning, Giuseppe. I would like you to produce a portrait of me. Thank you very much. And so Giuseppe goes off and, uh, and he thinks, oh, he'd like me to produce a portrait. And so this is what he produces. That word again. So this is what the, um, yes, the, 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 the stories were. So produces, do you get it? I made a joke. A really bad one, but it's a produce portrait, kind of. Um, so this was created in 1590 by an extraordinary artist called Acrimboldo, um, Giuseppe Acrimboldo, for um, Rudolf, as you can see, for Rudolf the second, who was the Habsburg um, the Holy Roman Emperor. So head of the Holy Roman Empire. So he's a pretty important man. And by the way, just so you can see, this is what he looks like um, normally. This is from an art by an artist called um, von Aachen around about the same time. So not bad, right? So not bad. So this is Rudolf II the, the um, of the, um, the, the Habsburg family. And this is what Acrimboldo produced as a portrait. Now, you might think, what on earth was he trying to do? You know, I've heard of apples, you know, the apple of your cheeks, but actually apples for cheeks, a pear for a nose, um, little pea pods, if you look, for, for, for eyelids, and then, then little wheat sheaths for, for eyebrows, a gourd for a, for, um, a, a forehead. I mean, like, what was he, what was he trying to get exiled? Um, he came from Milan and was working uh, by this time in, in Prague, actually, but had also worked for Maximilian II, Rudolf's father, in, in Vienna before that time. Um, you know, was he trying to get exiled? Was he trying to get, uh, I don't know, sacked at the very least um what on earth was he doing um you know was this a joke well if it was a joke Rudolf II absolutely loved it because he 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 laughed he he loved this portrait um so art historians have over the centuries kind of they have rendered um Giuseppe Acrimboldo um completely mad um you know at best frivolous at worst completely mad um they have said that he was clearly taking the mickey out of this very important family um they've said you know they've said all sorts of things but actually they were missing the point because Acrimboldo was com completely and utterly in tune with the the Habsburg court um it was an intellectual court it was so this was painted I mentioned in 1590 so the end of the 16th century so the, the yeah, there was a lot of um of focus on discovery and voyage um all exotic plants and animals were being brought back from various far-flung places and, and this was exciting and the Habsburg court actually was at the the, the centre of that so I mentioned that Acrimboldo worked for Maximilian II, Rudolf II's father. Maximilian II absolutely loved botany and zoology and he collected, he had a, I mean actually the Habsburg court was kind of a, a centre for scientific discovery so he collected all all sorts of things um, and an Acrimboldo had access to this very rare collection of flora and fauna and so what he's doing here is he has you know, he's 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 basically creating these extraordinary 
extraordinarily inventive and and strange and definitely playful, definitely funny, um, but actually quite um, uh, quite intellectually. I don't know, they're not intellectually challenging, but um, they have a depth to them that you might not necessarily see first off um so he's he's creating these portraits um using a lot of the i say these portraits huh, um of this portrait using many of the specimens that he has um that he has been lucky enough privileged enough to to see when the general populace wouldn't have a clue so for example the ear you can see um just just below me so it's an ear of corn so corn late 16th century that was completely rare I mean that was very very new um so the the, the sweet corn um you can see the neck is um it's actually a green aubergine extremely exciting in the late 16th century aubergines exciting sometimes for some people um in 2022 if you know, you know. Um, so, so yeah, so he was creating something that was very much um, of its of its time, of his moment in the court, and it was and it, and it was quite specific, really, to the Habsburg court. These these didn't necessarily travel particularly well, um, but they were um, they were very well thought of, and also the. I, I suppose the um the <laughs> you can tell I haven't done this for a while <laughs> the, <laughs> the um meaning if you like if if you if you want to uh, um ascribe a meaning to these works of art or to this work of art um then i I think you you can because if you haven't if you haven't quite got it, you know that it's all about bounty and um and uh, also i guess discovery with these rare um, fruits and vegetables. The title of this work is Vitumnus. Vitumnus was the Roman god of agriculture and growth and um, and sort of produce and seasons, I suppose. Um, so all about bounty and um, um, uh, pros um, being prosperous and you know and if you had a good harvest of course you know if your country was prosperous and that was largely based on agriculture late 16th century um then that was going to um really um start to mean that you're <laughs> sorry i'm laughing at myself because i'm thinking half the time i was just i am making sense but it's all a little bit roundabout isn't it <laughs> Never mind. I'll warm up. Um, so, um, yeah. So if if you if your country was doing well, it was going to be prosperous and and peaceful and harmonious. I think basically that's what I'm trying to say. Um, so yeah, this was a portrait of of Rudolf II that was really promoting the Habsburgs' prosperity um, and and the, the 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 peace and the harmony that they they hope would come with that. Um, so 1590, it is a very unusual portrait. And you might say, okay, well, you know, how did Akrambaldo know that this was going to be all right? You know, he's, he's invested a lot in this portrait. How did he know that Rudolf II was going to be all right with this? As clever and as witty and as charming and as peace promoting um, as it might be. Um, well, the answer is, is that this wasn't the first painting of its kind. That's why I keep using the words paintings in, in plural, uh, because way back, um, Maximilian, uh, Rudolf II's father actually um, commissioned, or well, he didn't commission, but um, Acrimbaldo produced a series of four paintings for Maximilian II of the Four Seasons. Um, so this was in 1563. So this is spring, a glorious um, blossoming of blossoms and, and flowers. Um, this is this is summer. 
Um, again, lots of berries, flowers, it's the, the wheat, it's, um, it's, it's lovely. This is autumn, um, the fruits of autumn, mushroom there is coming out of a barrel, I love this one. Um, and then winter, a little bit more sombre as it perhaps would be. I mean, look at this, isn't it? I mean, isn't that fantastic? A wonderful gnarled tree trunk. Look at the lips. That's fungi, fungus um, for the for the lips. Absolutely brilliant. And then the twigs coming up for the for the hair. Uh, so that was one series. And then a second series called The Elements was produced in um, in fifteen six. D six, I think. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so this, you might think, oh, that one's not so good. It it is very good, but this is a copy. Um, so the original has been lost. Um, th this is air or oh, birds. Um, so yeah, we don't this. We don't know who painted this, but this is a, a copy of the original, perhaps not painted in quite, um, with, by quite such a, a skilled hand. And but you, you look at it and you look at it up close and you think, yeah, it's just a bunch of birds. And you really do have to pull away from this one to see that it is a a, a, a face. I'm not going to say a portrait. It's not necessarily a portrait. It's just a face. So that's air and um, fire. Now this is great. Uh, this absolutely has loads of Habsburg symbols hidden within it, uh, perhaps more than any of the, the other works. So here you have, so for a start, you've got the fire strikers for the nose and the ear, and the, the face is flint. So fire strikers were um, one of the Habsburg symbols, you know, from the spark, anything can happen. Um, hair, look at the hair. I mean, talking about flame haired quite literally flame haired um, and then you've got cannons for the, 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 sh the shoulders so this alludes to the Habsburgs uh, big armies that were perpetually in war with the, uh, the, the Ottoman Empire and then the front and the, the, the chest so you've got two things I'm just going to bring this up actually as, um, as a close-up so you have this ram, this golden ram at the front there. This um, is a symbol of the Order of the Golden Fleece. So that was the highest order in the, the, the Habsburg Empire. And then the, the, the green section, if you look carefully, sort of wings and things, and you can see this is a double-headed golden eagle, which was a symbol of the, um, the Holy Roman Empire. Um, of which Rudolf II and his father Maximilian II before him uh, was, the, was the emperor. So kind of, you know, lots of little messages perhaps um, hidden, hidden in these, in these images. Um, finally, this is water, which is also quite fun, uh, made up of as you would um, expect, lots of sea creatures. There's an octopus, if you look over on the uh, left-hand side there. There's a crab on the right, um, a lobster next to the uh, next to the crab, just to the, um, sorry, the crab to the left, lobster just to the right of the crab, uh, which is cooked. I think, and a prawn as well, up by the ear. So the prawn also pink, so the prawn's been cooked too. Although apparently you can get um, red lobsters that haven't been cooked, but, but that just, that's just a little detail that just kind of makes me smile. So it's, it's hot, it's hot in here. A bit of coral at the top, and then the, the, the coup de gras, I love it. The, uh, the, the pearl necklace and the pearl earring. It's just a touch of class as befits um these these types of of work for um for for very important world world leaders um it seems though that maximilian the second he had a favorite and his favorite was this 
this painting, um, which is of winter, and, uh, and apparently it slightly resembled him. Apparently he had a, a well, resembled, but it, it sort of pertained a little bit to him. So he had um, a, a cloak that was quite similar to to this one. But I'm not sure that he would be that uh, that happy with the with, you know, with anybody saying that he actually looked like this. But uh, but he he enjoyed the image of winter clearly very much. Um, as indeed he enjoyed all of the images very much, uh, all um, eight of them, because in about something like 1570, there was a huge festival um, that was basically celebrating these eight paintings, the, um, the elements and the seasons. And everybody at that festival dressed up as, um, as, as characters, they dressed up um, as, as these images um, helped very much by Acrimbaldo. So he wasn't just a painter on, on canvas or on wood. Um, oh no, no, he made costumes and he would have made the sort of the, the ephemera that went with the, the, the festivals as well. Uh, and Maximilian II went as winter and he was very happy with himself by all accounts. Uh, also, both he and Rudolf loved these, these images, Maximilian actually in particular, because he had them copied. Um, so in fact, I, I already said, that um, the air was a, a copy that was just that's by an unknown artist that's not so good but Acrimbaldo also copied um, both the elements and the and the seasons and they were given to people um, well to, to visiting dignitaries Philip II of Spain had um, a copy of I think the elements oh, sorry the seasons um, August Augustus of Saxony had a copy of the seasons um, so, which is lucky because some of the originals have been lost and so um, some of the images that I've shown you, so um, it doesn't really matter, but um, um, summer and autumn are um, copies that Acrimbaldo uh, painted from the original because they were enjoyed so much. So there we go. So not, um, not such, I mean, yes, definitely a crazy portrait, um, but I think within the context of the day um maybe not quite as bonkers as we we perhaps think these images might be um and definitely very much in tune with the the avant-garde intellectual milieu of the Habsburg court. It's no wonder is it that uh, Andre Breton called Acrimbaldo, Giuseppe Acrimbaldo, the father of surrealism. So I think we're going to have to delve a little bit more. I've got a little bit more to say next time on um, Acrimbaldo. And, uh, and then I think we need to just delve a little bit into surrealism, which is a subject that we haven't, um, haven't talked about very much. So I'm going to stop sharing because also I've realised that this is the 100th episode of, um, what's it called? <laughs> Level Sister with an N. Happy New Year, everybody. I'll see you soon. Thanks for joining. Bye.